What's going on, y'all? So listen. What's going on, y'all? So listen. I know somebody gonna be like, bitch, what happened to the what it is video? Ain't one. You wanna know why? Because it really wasn't that many topics to really discuss. And one of the overwhelming topics was the topic about the abortion laws. And you know what? This country, I just I just don't know sometimes, okay? Um, I truly feel like, you know, being a woman. Who am I to tell somebody else what the hell to do with their body? And for these white men to be out here doing the same thing, trying to police what women do and give people who offer the service of abortion to, you know, these women who are in dire need sometimes, um, jail time just because they perform this procedure or whatever, I think it's 100% wrong. They're trying to overturn a, whole, overturn a whole lot of stuff, okay? And it's just not right. It's just not right because you would not want nobody telling you what to do with your body. So, therefore, how come you trying to tell a woman what to do with hers? Because they still look at women as property. And that's exactly what it is. We're not doing nothing. We're not really good for nothing but to reproduce if you want to do all that. That's, that's basically how they're looking at this shit. And I feel like it's totally wrong. And what else can you say about it? You know, it's just it's just 100% wrong. But anyway... um. That's basically all I had to say on what it is. So, you know, y'all got a mini what it is at the beginning of this episode. But let's just get into what this video is really about. Okay, y'all can put y'all comments down in the bottom how you feel about the abortion laws. Because they added another state. Missouri is now on, you know, the same thing with these restrictive laws and all this stuff. Girl, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. Alabama, Georgia, Missouri, and I think four or five other more states. You know, it's just a mess. Anyway, moving on from that. Real Housewives of Potomac, season four, episode three, Hot Mic. Baby. <laughs> we knew what type of episode this was going to be as soon as they started off. And they at this party or whatever. And you hear Michael over there. You know, at the end of the last week's episode, you see that, you know, they do a little preview of what's going to happen. And, you know, somebody was like, all I heard him say is he got a nice dick or something like that. I suck his dick or something like that. And Robin was like, I wish I never heard that. But, you know, it is what it is. Okay. I was like, oh, so y'all had to be talking about Michael because he's the only one. He's the only one. Okay. And then when this episode comes on, they proceed to t go into the future, into the present, I should say, um, and speak about showing Michael at this party and you got Ashley over here getting down with everybody else and she trying to figure out where her husband at. He over there with some black man talking about something. Oh, you look really nice. You're really in good shape and you're so fucking hard and all this stuff. And I'm saying like, what? You know what? And you know, at the same time, I don't even feel bad for Ashley because Ashley came for a couple of people and she always coming for people ever since she got on this show. Ever since she got on this show from the second season on, she been coming and meddling in people business. So therefore now, bitch, it's time for your turn. It's your turn, bitch. Okay. Um, what you got to say about this? And then they say a week earlier. So they start off with Ashley and Michael and her mother coming over. She's telling her mother how, you know, she stopped drinking for two months. But then at, um, you know, Candace party, I mean, um, you know, wedding, she started drinking again or whatever, you know, um, her and Michael hugged and all that stuff. And, you know, she had a little breakdown because this was the first time in a long time that they actually seemed on one accord. And, you know, it's like the baby fever is bringing it back and, you know, putting them back on the same track or whatever. And the next thing that they have to deal with is the fact that Ashley's uncle, her mother's brother, who was dealing with, you know, cancer last season, he's in remission and um, they want to talk it out between their little um, issues that they had between Michael and him. And so that's that. Then we have Karen. She and um, Ray, they're going to the cem uh, uh, what I don't know what it's called. Funeral store, a cemetery plot store, whatever. They're going to get um, the headstone made for her parents. And you know, she said the going to the wedding was a much needed, you know, break from reality, what was going on. And, um, you know, to find, to realize that her dad is only two years older than her husband and he died from this disease and you know she just you know was saying how she wouldn't know how to feel and wouldn't know how to go on if something was to happen to Ray himself you know that was a touching scene I ain't gonna get too deep into it but that was a touching scene okay um moving on from that we get Giselle 
Giselle is going to see Dr. Ken, her um, therapist, whatever that she was going to see when she was with Sherman. They was doing couples therapy. And all of this stuff was going on. And she's telling him about basically the relationship is terminated. And he was like, wait a minute. So you went from, because when I seen you guys, it was a lot of love there. So you went from being in love to nothing. She was like, I mean, I guess. I guess. I mean, he want to fuck me over. He told me that he was coming to the wedding with me. And then two hours, maybe two hours, two and a half hours later, you know, on the day of the wedding, before the wedding, he tells me that he's not showing up. And it's just like, deuces, bitch. I ain't got time for you. You know, she quit to cut a motherfucker off. And he was just telling him, I mean, telling her that, um, you know, you do all this stuff. You cut people off and you handle stuff and push shit away. And then, therefore, it comes out on other people on your relationships with your friends with your family with your kids and you taking your anger and frustration out of everybody and that is true and a lot of us are guilty of doing stuff like that i myself is guilty of doing shit like that you know so hey it is what it is and i was just like mm. she was like so what you self-medicated you self-medicated because she said you know she drank some whiskey or some shit like that and you know she did what she had to i was like go ahead giselle because she said um he asked her do you feel like he loved you and he said, she said, that, why do I keep saying he? Get my pronouns mixed up. Because I'm keep on thinking about the therapist that's he talking and then going into jail. That's what it is. But no, she said that she don't know. I said, well, damn, Giselle. Mm. So, um, Chris and Candace, they're in the aftermath of the wedding. And, you know, she's talking about going on a honeymoon and vacation and all this stuff. And he's not here for it because he said, bitch, I'm tired of shit. And she was like, that's what the honeymoon and shit for. He was like, who got time to waste money like that? If I'm just going to be going somewhere, spending some money just to go to sleep, bitch, hell no, I could do that here. You know, so they go downstairs and... Um, they open up their uh, wedding presents and stuff like that. Started talking about, you know, how her mother was not really that much of a pain. She was on her best behavior at the wedding. And he was talking about her their relationship and saying, I know she can get on your nerves, but, you know, she has some, so much love for you and all that. And basically how they want to get out of that house and start looking for their own place. Look what I did to myself. I was, I don't know what I was doing, but I know I did. Somehow I did like this. And then when I finished, it was this bruise right there. Bitch, messed up. But anyway, so, um, yeah, they talking about cutting the purse strings. I said, girl, okay, if you say so, you know, that's what you say. That's what you say. Are you sure? Are you sure? I don't think so. But anyway, you got uh, Monique and Chris, and they giving the kids baths. And, you know, she's talking about the struggle she's having with her pregnancy and how basically, you know, Chris going to have to get snipped, okay? He said, no, girl. She said, okay, well, then I'm just going to be, um, what's it called? I was about to say repentant, bitch. No, she just said, I'm not going to give you nothing, okay? That ain't what it is. And he said, no, girl, that ain't going to happen, all right? And, um... That's basically what's been going on with Monique, okay? And I'm just like, so this is what we get in this whole season with Monique about her kids and all this stuff. We're going to see her promoting her little products and shit like that. Because at this moment, I'm like, girl, what's your storyline? Just you pregnant and all this stuff? But um, anyway, moving on from that, you know, Giselle, she's about to meet up with somebody at a restaurant. And, you know, she just got through coming from therapy. And the therapist is having her think about, you know, all the relationships that she has, you know, let go of. Because she's the type of person that is just to toss things to the side, people to the side. Even if they didn't really do that much to her, they just make one little simple mistake. And there's no in-between. It's over. It's done with. And, you know, she said, I have to re-examine why I'm no longer friends or talking to certain people, you know, for whatever reason. And then who comes to show up? Bitch, Katie. Bitch, we ain't seen Katie since season fucking one when they was trying to say that Katie was up in there doing coke, okay? Girl, she came in looking like she was on something, but I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna say that. So, basically, Katie and Giselle kind of have been, you know, kicking it a little bit, trying to get their friendship back because they did have some friction when they first, um, you know, kind of met and we first seen them. But um, she wants to introduce them to the girls, okay? She said that all the other girls was asking about her, Ashley and Robin or whatever, and want to introduce her to the other girls or whatever. Um, Katie talking about something she wearing that shawl because it's Indian Independence Day, but she was lying or whatever. Her roots just wasn't done. She still had a whole bunch of new growth, new growth that wasn't touched up. But, you know, Katie let us know that she ain't with old boy no more, okay? Remember when we first saw her, she was supposed to be getting married to that white man? Okay, so, um... 
she was some 27 year old dude who wealthier than her you know he got a whole lot of stuff in the house more than her um and he really don't contribute to nothing you know dealing with her okay and giselle said you know see my old self would have said bitch you need to let this mental fucker go but at this point i'm just gonna keep it on cue and i'm just keeping mute okay you know just let her do what she gotta do and um see what it's gonna be like bringing her around the rest of the girls because they haven't seen her in a long time because you know katie she's quirky she's silly she's goofy and all that stuff and you know one of the last events that they had um it didn't really go too well you know that's when people was trying to accuse her of doing coke and you know um being drunk and high on stuff and all that shit you know which nine out of ten even though i just made the joke about it earlier she probably wasn't it's probably just her personality you know um but moving on from that we get this whole situation with juan and robin <sighs> They about to go broke again, okay? That's basically what it got. I, I got the feeling, okay? I don't want to throw that out there in the universe like that. You know, I want to snatch that back, okay? But that's the feeling that you're giving me, Robin, okay? Y'all been rehabbing this house for over a year, a four-month job that's damn near going on a year or so, and ain't nothing really done. You claim that it's just cosmetic that needs to be done. So you mean to tell me the electrical, the plumbing, and all that is all together because it was not a toilet in one of those bathrooms, okay? I'm just saying. It didn't look like that plug on um, the, the tub worked either, you know? So, um, I don't know. You know, they trying to figure out what's going on. Come to find out they $10,000 over budget. Why, well, like, are you sure about this? Because, you know, you the one that got us up in this trouble the last time, bitch fucking around with the money. And I was like, girl... Cut your losses, or I don't know. Hurry up and get this shit done so you can sell this shit. I, well, what's the hold up? You getting janky people to do the stuff? Girl, Robin. I wouldn't trust Robin with nothing, okay? Not after the last time you got our shit take. Girl, please. So, Ashley and Candace, they meet up. Um, Ashley and Candace has a little crazy type of relationship. They're not really friends, but because they're both from the pageant world. Because leave it to Ashley, she said they're not friends. They're just for, you know what I'm saying? they the FR. You know, they're not the I-N-E-D. You know? So, wait. I-N. Nope, that ain't even how you spell it. The I-E-N-D, bitch. Girl, get the shit together. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. Okay? But, um, you know, they're talking about the wedding and being able to see each other and, you know, um, Ashley talking about how she's trying to get pregnant and, you know, Candace a little confused because you're drinking and doing all this stuff. Basically, they were just reminiscing and coming back together and having a little PYT quote unquote time, like, you know, Candace said. Moving on from that, um, I really don't feel like Ashley truly likes Candace like that. I think, I don't know, because... Ashley, that type of bitch that's going to throw, as we saw in the preview, she's going to throw some things in her face. And I just don't like people like that. Like, if we're supposed to be cool, we're supposed to be, you know, friends or, you know, trying to become friends. Why, when we get into an argument, you throw some stuff in my face or something don't go the way that you want. You want to throw this in my face and, you know, all this shit about me and my mom and living in the house and what the she paid for and all that. So that's all that you can say about her. Okay, what else? We heard that. She knows that. What else can they say? But anyway, moving on from that, um, <laughs> Karen was up there saging her house. She said, baby... Please let all the dark spirits come out of this house, including Giselle. When she bring her ass up in here, the sage went out. She had to relight that thing. She saged Giselle when she came in there. And she was like, you know, can I get a grand tour, a grand dom tour of the house? And she was like, no, bitch, you get two rooms, okay? Um, Giselle, talking about some, so I only get two rooms? I only get two rooms? Why don't you just say I only get two rooms? Because, you know, you don't live in this house. You live in part of this house, okay? And that's probably the basement. Just say that you live in the basement, okay? And that's it. See, Giselle? See, Giselle? That's why you got a fucked up relationship now because you can't be, you can't stop being shady for not one minute. For somebody that's your friend that you're trying to get their relationship back on track, you can't stop being shady for one goddamn second, okay? Um, no, just because you have a big house don't mean that you live in that whole house, okay? You probably centered in a couple of rooms, period. But like um, Karen said, bitch, you had over a year of fuck-up, so therefore you only get a little bit. You ain't finna get everything right off the bat, all right? You know, they talked about their relationship, talked about the fact that, you know, Sherman ain't in the picture no more. And, of course, Karen had to tee that um, Sherman left that relationship long before Giselle did because she didn't seen him around Saks Fifth Avenue with other bitches. I was like, oops, okay. You know, 
and it is what it is. You know, Giselle says she's doing okay. And, you know, um, Karen said, I would rather lose a friendship than being a fake friend. You know what I'm saying? And so they came to some agreement that they're going to try to work on their relationship. And uh, Giselle was like, uh, let's tell each other some secrets so we can break the ice and all this stuff. And so Giselle was like, okay. I use um, body products to remo hair removal to, you know, do her uh, vagina or whatever. Okay. And then Karen told her about, you know, ever since she got the implants out, she kind of wish she hadn't because now she can't go to sleep without a bra because she don't want them going east to west, you know, while in the bed with Ray. Ray sleep. Ray looked like as soon as he put his head to the pillow, he go to sleep every time. Okay. He got that old man sleeping him. Soon as they, they go to sleep anywhere. That's what Ray looked like. Okay. Karen, he don't give a shit. He don't give a shit. I'm pretty sure he ain't got his balls in, uh, in a jock strap so that his, um, his testicles won't hang lower than they already are. No girl, sleep comfortably. Okay. But you know, they gonna work on that shit. We'll see where they go and how far and how long. So it's time for Ashley's um, birthday party for her Uncle Lump, okay? And let me tell you something. Uncle Lump is a cutie, okay? He is he's 52 years old. I said, listen, black don't crack sometimes, okay? Sometimes. Because sometimes we be out here looking like we melting. But, you know, for the majority of the situations, black don't crack. He look like he's 30. Well, I ain't going to say that. He look like he's 38, okay? He he look he look really nice, all right. And so um Giselle show up there, you know, Ashley dressed supposed to be Jazzy Jeff and um uh, Michael, so because it's a nineties theme party or whatever. Michael wanna be Will Smith for the Fresh Prince and then they trying to do the handshake and all that stuff. And then Giselle said in that confession, You got Brown Dick over here saying his vows using the um Song titles from R&B songs, and then you got the Aussie over here trying to be Fresh Prince. Well, I think these white men are trying to be Wakanda forever and having identity crisis. I don't know why that made me laugh, but it did make me laugh because it was okay. But um, you know, everybody's just having a good time. Everybody's coming in. Um, we find out that Monique and Karen not coming, and like Mo Karen said, why? Why would I come? You did all this stuff and, you know, you feel as though, like um, Ashley said, I feel like this would have been an opportune, opportune time for us to clear the air and try to get some, um, you know, back on track or whatever. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's all about timing. And you don't clear the air or try to reconcile with somebody at a huge event like that when it's not even on you. When knowing how y'all can just turn shit and just, you know, get out of control. Look what happened when Monique tried to do it with um Giselle at uh, Candace's wedding. It wasn't the right time, but she probably felt that that was the only opportune time she had. But, you know, it could have got real ugly, okay? It could, and almost did, you know what I'm saying? You have to uh meet these individuals one-on-one, -on -one, but, but we ain't finna do this shit in no crowded room so we can start some drama and mess up your uncle's, um you know, uh shit. Nah, we ain't finna do that. Mama came walking up in there like, hey, bitch, you know, she doing her shit or whatever. Um, Katie bring her ass in there and uh basically was like when um she met Katie said, how long you been married? Oh, we like four or five days in. I wish I would have met you five days ago and I would have told you not to do it. Candace looked like, bitch, what? Mind you, Candace is observant, okay? Candace said, so Ashley telling me that she want to have a baby, but yet she's drinking all this alcohol and stuff. Now, what you saying don't match up with your actions. I'm just saying. I said, hmm, hmm. Okay, you know, call it on out. Um... But, yeah, that was what was going on. And why they over there talking? The girls are over there talking with each other. And then, you know, when uh, Ashley go get her mom, they looking for uh, Michael. Michael over there talking to the dude at the bar. And it looked like he was searching for him. Like, he was just, hey, hey, brother, you look so good. <laughs> Man, you really strong. You've been working out. He was like, yeah, yeah, I work out like five times a week. I said, bruh. I mean, that's cute and all, but it's Michael. You never know if it's harmless play, you know, just being inquisitive or whatever, or if he really trying to tap that because, you know, again, it's Michael. And he was like, you fucking rock hard, man. I said, wait, wait. <laughs> Michael, go sit your ass down before you get your ass in some more trouble, boy. I swear to God. Them the ones you got to fucking watch out for because he did go over there like he was sneaking to do some shit. I said, Michael, please sit down. So, yeah, Katie was just like, I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Because of her experience, she was just like, I will tell you, marriage is a lot of work. You know, don't do it. You know, it was kind of insulting because Chris was right there whatever. But they cleared that up and didn't let it bother them. 
they were sitting down there talking about how she got a $30 check, $30,000 check or something, and then her mama took it right from her, whatever, some shit. And, um, you know, uh, uh, Candace started talking about how, you know, her mama is the bank of Wells Fargo and all this shit. And here you go. Giselle was like, bitch, get a job, get a W-9, get a W-2, get something, okay? That's what you need to do. She was like, I'm just the only child. And Candace was like, you lucky, you lucky. It was like, what, she lucky because she the only child because of the money? It was like, no, because of the money, you ain't got to split nothing because Candace has a brother and a sister that she has to split the inheritance with. And so, you know, she was like, you get more love. You don't have to share the love. You don't have to share none of this stuff. You don't have to share anything, okay? And so at this point, everybody start, you know, um, getting ready to uh, wish uh, Uncle Luck a, a lump of happy birthday and as she was trying to figure out did Michael and him talk and he was like yeah we talked a little bit and they did kind of breathe over the issue and he was like whatever happened all that shit's in the past it don't matter whatever they sang happy birthday to him play Ashley's song and it was all to the good everybody was having a good time then they put up there four hours later they was going to like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, okay? Everybody was having fun. They showing Robin's footage of her cell phone camera. And um, we hear, you know, because earlier when Juan, um, Robin came in, Michael was asking about Juan. Where is he? And he didn't show up and all this stuff because Juan was at a football practice, okay? And so at this point in the camera, he was like, I love your, I love Juan. I love Juan. I said... Okay, then he cleared that shit up and was like, he my bro. I was like, okay, ain't nothing wrong with what he just said. But, bitch, Robin said, I don't remember half the shit, but I do remember the fact that I heard that motherfucker say, I would suck his dick if I could. I said, hold up. She said, I don't want to speak nothing else of it, but I remember that shit. And that is why the episode is called Hot, Hot Mike, okay? Because at the end of the very end of this episode, Michael said to the producer, was my mic on this whole time? It was like, no, uh, I don't think my mic was on this whole time. Was it? it was like, I mean, we ain't hear nothing or whatever. He was like, thank God, because I probably said some shit that I regret it. I said, you think? You think? You know, ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of kink. But damn, Michael. <laughs> All right. <laughs> y'all tell me how y'all felt about this episode. And I will see you guys later. Going to watch Game of Thrones. Peace.